Right now, I'm going to show you five tips that you probably don't know inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And today I've got five tips for you inside of the latest version of Lightroom Classic. So I think you're really gonna love these. Um, you're gonna enjoy the camera profile and the last one is a real doozy, which I'm pretty sure you don't know. All right, let's start with something nice and easy, which could be a challenge for some people is how to remove the power lines inside of this photo. All right, let's head to the develop module and we're gonna grab our spot tool and let's get rid of these power lines. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna resize your brush so it's just a little bit bigger than the power lines. Now, if you try to do it here and the size is kind of a little hard to tell, it's better to just go over it. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key makes it bigger. That was not the tip. Here's the tip right now. To get rid of a power line, click and release everything. Go to the end of that power line, hold down the shift key, click again and boom. And if it looks a little weird here, all you need to do is just click on that destination and just move it to an area which is nice and clear. Let's do another one. Click, hold the shift key, click. Same here. And if you miss some little bits here, it's not a big deal. You just drag over here and you can just fix them. And to hide these pins, just tap the H key and then that'll show them again. Tip number two, working on the same image. Have you ever tried to find all the sensor dust on your photograph or little spots and stuff like that? It can take a little bit of time and a keen eye. However, if we grab our spot removal tool and then we look at the photograph, I can see there's a little bit of a dot there. Um, maybe there's one there. Maybe there's some others. What we do is turn on visualize spots and then increase the slider and look at that. All those spots are going to become apparently obvious. And all we need to do is just tap, 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 tap. Watch out, some of these are clouds. You're just looking for those spots, hit them, boom. Turn off visualize spots and look at that. Super clean. Tip number three automatically applying adjustments to a photo depending on which camera you use, even if it's two of the same camera. All right, so we go up under here and we're gonna choose preferences. Under preferences, if we go under camera, we can see all the different cameras that have been used for the photos inside of our catalog. And all we need to do is choose a camera. So say it's, you know, the 77D, maybe everything I shoot on the 77D, I want this to be black and white. So what I do is I go under default and I choose a preset. And of course you can create your user preset to whatever you want. But in this case, I'm just gonna grab a black and white punch because that's what I want all the photos imported from this photo to take on this preset. And by the way, I did mention if you have more than one camera. So if I choose show serial numbers and I click here. So if I have more than one of these types of cameras, like I do here with some of the DJI ones, there's the serial numbers for those different cameras. So you could have two identical cameras and have one of them apply a preset and another one not. And the last thing you wanna do on here is just make sure for the master, you are not using Adobe Fault, you're choosing camera settings and override master settings for the specific camera. So that means now whenever I import a photo from this particular camera, this is gonna happen. One last thing create default. Now that that's created, that's what's going to happen. Tip number four, organizing your develop panel. So if we go here under our develop panel and we decide we want to right click and we can customize the develop panel, I can change the order. So if I want the tone curve to come first, I drag that to the top. If I don't want lens correction to show, I can turn it off. And we relaunch. Now the curves are on top and that module's gone. Now, if you want to restore them, just simply right click on here, choose customize develop panel, default order, 
Make sure everything's turned on, hit save and restart. All right, just in case you're saying, you know what, I already knew that one. Okay, let me show you part two. Part two of customizing your interface. So here's all the modules. Maybe you don't use all the modules. If you right click here, you can hide them. Say the maps, say the books, and we can simplify that right there. And we don't have to restart for this one. All right, so here we go. Tip number five. And before I give you this one, if you like these, hit that like button right now and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to us already. Okay, here we go. I said this is going to be a doozy. Okay, this one here, we're going to edit our video inside of Lightroom Classic. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Maybe you say, you know what? I already knew I could do video. Bet you didn't know that you can also add music and sound to it. Let's do the whole thing. So here we have some aerials shot here that I've done. And if I hit the play button, we can see beautiful shot right there. Now, I want to apply some color correction. Of course, if I hit the develop module, it's going to say videos not supported in develop. Of course not. Okay, so what we can do here is we can twirl this down. And then when we twirl this down here, we have an option to click there and we can capture a frame. All right. So now that I've captured this frame, let's just go to all photos, click on this frame, and I'm going to go to the develop module. Let's make some adjustments. All right, we've got a nice cinematic look here. Just create a preset. I'll call it film grade. Go back to our video. Choose the library module, of course. Quick develop, user presets, click on film grade. And boom, there we go. Now it's applied to our video. Now, didn't I say we were going to add sound effects? Let's go to the slideshow module. It's going to load in our video. Now, of course, we can use all these tools here and we can customize the way we want this to look. So we've got these different templates that we could do different things or we could just go all the way down here and just crop to fill and then we just get the video. So it's up to you if you want the stuff around it or not. Now, music. Scroll down to music, make sure we turn it on. Hit plus to add our song. Select some music. This one here is from Epidemic Sound. I've got a link in my description underneath. And let's test it out. By the way, we can go down here and we can make it fit the music if we have slides. And of course we can adjust the audio balance. So if we have sound on our video, we can just do video here. If we just want to play the music, go to the other side or balance the two. And by the way, it says music. It doesn't just have to be music. You can add any audio track in there. And you can also combine different clips here inside the slideshow to create an actual video edit inside of Lightroom. If you want to get this out as a video, just choose export video. There's not a ton of options, but if you want to do 1080, let's do our video is 1080p. And we'll call it video in Lightroom, drop it on my desktop, export, and we're done. All right, so I hope you enjoyed these five tips inside of Lightroom Classic. How many of these were new to you? Let us know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on all the notifications so you know when I upload a new video, which is every single Tuesday. And by the way, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we have our live stream. And on the weekends, back to basics weekends. So check all of those out. And anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.